January, because of Mr. Tarrant by Bra Bouillet. Jessica, Act 6, Scene 1. Anna's house was small but cozy, just the right size for her and her mother. It was painted white with gray shutters, and there was a nice front porch. Anna met us there. We said our hellos, and before I knew it, my mom was shaking hands with Terry. That's Anna's mom. Terry invited my mom in for a cup of coffee, and they disappeared into the kitchen. Anna led me to her bedroom. I hope our moms become friends, I said. Me too, Anna said. My mom doesn't have any. Neither does mine, I thought. In California, my dad was always the one working and socializing while my mom hung out with me. We didn't see him much. Even back then, he was very busy. He called the other day and asked mom if she had received the divorce papers. That was it. He didn't even ask to talk to me. You didn't read your reading bell till, I said to Anna. I saw the book sitting on her nightstand. Do you like it? I do, Anna said. Mom brought it home for me from the library where she works. I didn't know Terry worked in a library. How exciting. I wanted to talk to her about books. And then Anna told me that her mother was taking art classes. She showed me some of her mom's artwork. Amazing. I immediately thought of Danielle and hoped she would get a chance to meet Terry and discover for herself the connection they shared. After that, Anna showed me the rest of her books and rock collection. Then I taught her how to make worry dolls, something I'd learned about from one of my characters in a book I read. I figured the dogs, dolls would worry about my dad because I was done with that. Our play date was perfect and it flew by like a day at the amusement park. We said our thank yous and goodbyes and agreed to do it again. Driving home, mom said, what you heard about Terry was right. Poor girl. I stayed quiet. After seeing Terry myself, I knew the story was right. She looked very young. I told her about your father, mom said. I remained quiet. I didn't know how to feel. Surprised? Angry? Happy? I felt all of these at the same time. Mom was quiet too. I guess we were busy thinking to ourselves. Anna. Danielle wasn't able to come to my first play date because of the bad timing, but Jessica made it. We had a blast. Jessica's mom drove her over, but instead of dropping Jessica off and leaving, she came up to our front door and accepted mom's invitation for a cup of coffee. I was really glad. My mom never has anyone over, so it turned out to be her first play date too. Maybe she was done paying for her mistake now. I sure hope so. And since I was the mistake, I felt like it was my fault. I wanted to help her find a friend and a husband. The afternoon flew by. After Jessica, her mother left, mom pulled me into a hug. Those are genuine people, Anna, she said. You found a good friend there. You can get as close to her as you want. Mom's words made me smile. I hope Danielle would come the next time. I was sure mom would think the same of her. Danielle, class meeting, Mr. Terrap announced. This was one of my favorite times in the classroom. We all moved our desk out of the way and made a circle with our chairs. Everybody sat in the circle, even Mr. Terrap. He held on to the microphone. It wasn't a real microphone, but we used it as our talking object. You can only speak when you have the microphone. I waited for Mr. Terrap to get us started. It looks like our chain should touch the floor soon. As long as you guys can give me another great day or two, Mr. Terrap said. The chain was our class reward system. Mr. Terrap had hung a single link from the ceiling on the first day of school, and he attached a link each time we had an outstanding day as a class. Our goal was to get the chain to touch the floor, at which point we'd earn a free day. You've done super so far, Mr. Terrap said. So I'm wondering, what would you like to do for your free day? Mr. Terrett passed the mic to his left. You didn't have to say anything if you didn't want to. Alexia passed it along to the next person. Ever since Mr. Terrett had taken her out into the hall, she hadn't said anything. Luke was the first one to make a great suggestion. Why can't we just have a day to do whatever we want? I, it'd be like indoor recess, but we could plan it better and just have free time. I like Luke's idea, Jeffrey piped up when he got the mic. If it's a free time, maybe James and Joey and Emily or some of the collaborative kids could come up for a little bit 
or if we wanted, some of us could go down there. We could bring in games, Anna added, taking the mic, and then it was my turn. I think we should do that, what everyone suggested for part of the day, I said, but maybe we could go outside too. Everyone cheered. It was weird having the older girls agree with me. If Alexia had been her old self, she would have controlled them. But now that Alexia was sidelined, all the girls got along better. Not having girl, worlds, di girl wars didn't mean everything was perfect. I still had a problem. Anna. I hadn't gone to her play date because I'd been too chicken to ask my mom. I made up some excuse about it being a bad weekend for my family. Jessica told me she had a great time and that Anna's mom was friendly. Now Anna asked us about coming over again. Find out when it'll be good for a weekend for your family and we'll have planned the play date for then, Anna told me. I've got to mention it to my mom this time. I just have to. Mr. Terrip had last was the last to speak at the meeting. I like what I've heard, he said. We could plan for part of the day to be spent inside playing games. Then we'd get some fresh air. I'll think about it some more and let you know. But first, you need to earn the last link. Meeting adjourned, he said. He always ended by saying that. I really like these meetings. The first time we had one, Mr. Terrup told us that it was a, a way for everyone to have a voice. I didn't get it at first, but now I do. Peter, we finally earned a class reward, or almost. I really hope Mr. T would come through for us about going outside. So I shot my hand up as soon as class started the next day. What is it now, Peter? Mr. T said. Have you thought about us going outside? The school rule says we can't go out in the snow. We can go out on the blacktop, but it's too crowded and there's nothing to do. Everyone was quiet. They listened because they knew I was right. Well, Peter, I like how you're thinking ahead. I did talk with Miss Williams and she gave us special permission to go out in the snow as long as everyone has snow pants and hats and gloves and boots. She gave us special permission even after we all saw her underwear, I said. Yes, Mr. T said, trying to move us past the giggles that started. Permission for the snow, I asked again, just to make sure I had it right. In the snow, Mr. T said. The key being everyone needs to bring their stuff or else we can't go. I couldn't believe it. When I went to bed that night, I had visions of snowballs dancing in my head. It was going to be the best class party day ever. Jessica, Act 7, Scene 1. The glass bubbled with energy. Mr. Terrip had just attached the last link needed for our paper chain to touch the floor. The links were hard to come by with the likes of Peter and Alexi in our classroom, but we did it. Congratulations, you've earned your free day, Mr. Terrip said, a class party day. Peter couldn't believe it. None of us could, really, but Peter was beside himself. The only thing he could wrap his brain around was going outside to play in the snow. Don't forget your snow stuff, California girl, he said to me. I didn't need reminding. It was all I could think about, but not because I was excited. Act 7, Scene 2. I raised my hand tentatively and waited for Mr. Terrup to call on me. It was nearly time to go home. I couldn't wait any longer. You have a question, Jessica? Yes, sort of, I said. I have a problem. I don't have any snow pants. I didn't need them in California. Silence. It was like I sucked all the excitement out of the classroom with a gigantic vacuum hose. Peter glared at me. I couldn't look at him. And then I saw Luke raise his hand. Mr. Terrup called on him. Lipster, I have a pair of snow pants Jessica can borrow. They're my sister's old ones. That a baby, Lukester, Peter yipped. Saved. Thanks, Lukester. That's very nice of you, Mr. Terrup said, looking in my direction. I'm sure Jessica will take them. I could only nod. Yes, Peter yelled. This is going to be great. I thought so, too, especially after Luke's generosity. I always thought Luke only cared about himself. Maybe I was wrong to prejudge him. Mr. Terrup sat in his desk smiling. He reminded me of the old professor in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Did he know everything? Luke, 27 links. 
That's how many it took for the chain to hit the floor. I was wrong. I had estimated 26. Mr. Tarrip had us estimate the final number when we had only five. Most everybody jotted down random guesses, but I took a ruler and measured the length of what we had and the length left to reach the floor. The real problem was that the lengths were all different sizes, a variable that I couldn't control. I averaged the lengths that were hanging and used that to help me come up with 26. All right, gang, Mr. Tarrip said, 27 lengths. Let's see if anyone guessed that. He had all our guesses stuffed in an empty coffee can. I was hoping to be the closest. Maybe nobody got it right. He pulled our little scraps of paper out one by one. 21, 30, dollar word, 50, everyone laughed except me. 23, aha, uh -huh, he said, here's one, 27. I lost. I can't believe I was wrong. And the winner is Anna. She must have guessed. There's no way she could have figured it out. Anna walked up to Mr. Tarrup with her head held high. At least the winner wasn't Peter or Alexia. Congratulations, Anna, Mr. Tarrup said. He handed her a homework pass. She was all smiles. I didn't need one of those anyway. Yay, Anna, Jessica said, way to go. But wait, Mr. Tarrup said. There seems to be one more estimate that's correct. Luke must be Luke's, I heard someone whisper. Drum roll, please. Blah, 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 blah. And the winner is Peter. No way, I screamed inside my head. Of course, Peter made a major production of walking to the front of the room and taking a dramatic bow. Thank you, thank you, he said. This is a great honor. Mr. Terrip handed him a homework pass. Get out of here, he said. Everyone laughed except for me. Peter flashed his homework pass in my face. The Elmer sneakers didn't bother me, but this did. I felt hot. My face and ears burned. I turned lobster red. I could feel it. I'm gonna get even, I thought. The chain has touched the floor, Mr. Terrip announced. It's time for a free day. My colleagues, dollar word, and I were in for a real treat. Mr. Terrip told us that we could be going outside. Great, I thought, but what's the catch? Was he gonna tell us to bring our shovels, dollar word, to find out how many scoops it would take to be clear of the parking lot? Nope, just snow pants, hats, boots, and mittens, dollar word. We had the okay from Miss Williams to play in the snow as long as everybody had the proper snowballs. Jessica threw us the curveball, and boy, was it a bender. She didn't have snow pants. Talk about hitting us with the unexpected. So who comes to the rescue? Me. I had to. Plus, I like Jessica. She was serious about school, and I didn't want to miss the chance to inoculate. Dollar word. Peter with a snowball. Jeffrey. It's not your fault. That's what Jessica had said to me, and that was what I kept repeating in my head. The only other person to ever tell me that was Michael. It was just before he died. I have a hard time believing it, but his words still make me feel a little better. I need his words and Jessica's, because I know Mom and Dad blame me. They sure don't love me. Why else are they so silent? They don't sp dare speak to me. Rarely and they never speak to each other. Dad has started going to work again, but Mom mopes around the house. She hasn't been out of her pajamas since Michael's funeral. Christmas was tough again this year. It was our second one without Michael. Not that we celebrated either time. Dad got a tree this year, though. It showed up one day in our living room. I put a few decorations on it. Mom pretended it wasn't there.